Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there and welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. I'm sure glad you joined us today. We're going to have a great discussion on low stress cattle handling with Dr. Tom Knopfsinger. It's sure to be a good show and I'm sure glad you joined us. I'm Dennis Tebow. My wife and I, Kathy, are the owners of Wolf Creek Cattle Company. We have grown to approximately 70 bulls. I'm Reese Arnold. I'm the livestock manager at Wolf Creek Cattle Company. You know, these are not just like normal cattle. These cattle, they're hauled anywhere from, you know, eight to 10 hours a day across the United States and asked to perform. The Multiman 90 keeps them kind of level. It maintains and balances their system. The stress level is less when, you know, when everything's right and working right, then they're working right. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Welcome to Doc Talk, and Tom, thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be here, Dr. Dan. It's, it really always, is. it's always great to have you. Folks, Dr. Tom Knopfsinger is a veterinarian. He's from Benkelman, Nebraska, and he is a member of a group, a veterinary group, called the Production Animal Consultation Group, or PAC. And today, Dr. Knopfsinger, for as many years as I've known you, and and all the talks and, and the travelings that you do and your passion for the beef industry and for the veterinary profession, it is truly an honor for me to have you here. Thank you, Dr. Dan. It's, a, it's an absolute honor for me to visit uh, both the university and, and Dr. Dan. Dr. Dan is the first um, colleague that I ever remember that gave me his business card uh, when he was at Cactus and said that he was director of animal well-being. Yeah. And that's, uh, I think that's a really important, uh, it's a really important uh, uh, emotion for me because some of, some of our veterinary colleagues, some of our stockmen do not understand um, how important animal well-being is. Well, it all relates and, and likewise when we were at those meetings and, and things and we're exchanging ideas, we kindled a friendship and, and uh, really got down and we're doing some good work. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a dynamic organization, and and it's important to understand that uh, the the more the best way to teach uh, the best way to learn is to teach, and uh, the more we teach, the more questions we have. <laughs> you got that. Well, let's talk about low stress cattle handling, and and kind of talk about you know the introduction to the caregiver, and some of your core principles. Dan, when I when I used to uh, go to a feedlot or a backgrounding yard or a ranch, uh, as I drove into an operation, I saw people with the animals, and, and my definition in their mind that they were caretakers. Um, and this caretaker word um, had its limitations. The more vaccine we gave, the more antibiotics we used, uh, the more things that the more tools that were in my box. Uh, Pretty soon I got disillusioned with the efficacy of some of those products. And so I started to look and think about maybe, maybe that human impact is what influences some of the vari variability in health performance at our operations. So therefore, instead of a caretaker, let's start, start talking about caregivers. We, I noticed that there were certain people that could take a product and get great response from it. Right. Maybe had a poor working facility, but this, these products or these management things really worked. And so I started watching uh, how that person interacted with the animals. And all of a sudden I noticed that they were able to move animals or do something with these animals in such a way that he was giving to the animals rather than taking from them. And hence? Hence performance and health and attitude got better. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, when we come back from break, we're going to discuss more with Dr. Tom Knopfsinger about low stress handling and the caregiver. You're watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. And by the Graham School for Cattlemen, with over 100 years of continuous service to the cattle industry. To find out more, visit us online at grahamschool.com. Be 
relief producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300LA from Norbrook, specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle. Noramycin 300LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300LA is the practical choice for your herd. Here in Dallas, we're proud that our vehicles use an advanced biofuel called biodiesel. It's made from renewable resources like soybean oil, canola oil, even recycled cooking oil. This year, biodiesel will displace almost a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. Our air is cleaner, our economy is stronger, and America's more energy independent. It's working here, it can work in your community. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a Power Stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, who is a veterinarian and a member of the Professional Animal Consultation Group, which consists of veterinarians from Nebraska, Kansas, and Colorado. And uh, Dr. Tom, we're, we're discussing uh, some of your core concepts we've discussed the caregiver and and now let's let's move a little bit further about what it is about the caregivers and what they do dr. Dan what I noticed what that people that moved from being a caretaker to a caregiver were the people that were willing to adjust their position or their body language or their posture to the point where it was very very friend, friendly to the cattle or the swine or the sheep and in fact, uh, what, what I was able to notice was that, that cattle just crave to see what is guiding them. And at the same time, they crave to see where you intend them to go. So the, the most efficient stockmen that empowered these animals to move in a voluntary fashion were the people that could understand that they had to be where it was easy for the animals to see them. So when we talk about the, the point of the shoulder or you know, different things, landmarks on the animal that we've talked about, you know, where, what, what are your concepts on that? You know, I, uh, I, 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 that confused me for a long time because I used to use the shoulder as a point of orientation, the fact that the shoulder might be the point of balance to these animals. And that's, that's a reference point, but really the organ or the part of the animal that we're communicating with is the eye. Now let me hold on one second because um, for our non-producer uh, viewers, when we're talking about the point of balance, that's the point that, that when I go past it, the animal either reacts forward or goes back, right? That's right. And so uh, you would, you, if, if in fact your uh, intention was to stop the animal, uh, I guess you would expect to be behind the shoulder. Gotcha. And if you wanted to go, if you wanted the animal to go forward, uh, or vice versa, that's what's confusing about it. Now we know a couple important things. First of all, all of these four-legged animals want to remain straight. And so, in fact, if you can create a, a position or a relationship with that animal where they can continue to see you and keep their head straight, that eliminates that need for them to turn or twist in order to be able to see you. That is the first indication or demonstration to these cattle that you're very respectful and that you're willing to put yourself where they want you and where it's easy for them. And releasing pressure? This, this, um, 
We might talk a little bit about the working zone or flight zone, and, and I think it's important to know that that's, a, that's a, the distance around an animal that either you get response or you don't. So when they that's, notice you. That's when, you, when they notice you. That's when they tell you that you're close enough and you're starting to interact with them. The flight zone then would be larger for animals that are a little more skittish or? Every animal has a different size and shape of a working zone, not a flight zone. Okay. Our goal is not to get them to flee. We'd like them to work for us. And that the boundary between non-working zone, being in the working zone and out of the working zone, is a very gray area. And that's where we get release of pressure. Cool. When we come back from the break, I want to pick up and maybe we'll show some videos on, on this topic. Okay. That'd be a good, yeah. We'll sure glad you joined right. us today. All right. Thanks. We're really glad that you joined us as well. We'll be back in a minute. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batrol 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi folks, it's Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Thanks for joining me for today's On the Farm Tip. We're going to talk about extra label drug usage. Labeled drug usage is when I pick up the bottle, there's a label on it. And when I look at the label, it's going to tell me how much to give, how often, and the route of administration. Route of administration might be sub-Q, IM, or, or intravenous. Now, anytime you change the route of administration, or if you change the dosage, or you change the time in which you give those drugs, that's called extra-label drug usage. We can't do that without the written consent of a veterinarian. So we need to follow label directions. If we don't follow label directions, we can wind up with antibiotic residues in the meat. And so when we do an extra-label drug usage, we need the veterinarian involved. Thanks for watching today's On the Farm Tip. I'm Dr. Dan, and I'll see you down the road. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Baxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Join the team, the Beef Quality Assurance Team. Getting BQA certified shows you're committed to practices that produce the highest quality beef in the world. And by visiting BQA.org, you can take the online certification course at a time that fits your schedule and from the comfort of your home or office. You'll also find lots of helpful tips on improving animal health and animal handling practices. Get certified, BQA certified, because it's about doing the right thing. Visit BQA.org today and become a member of the BQA team. In the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave, straight, simple, sold. Hi there folks and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from Kansas State University and I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Dr. Tom Knopfsinger. We have been talking about low stress cattle handling and Dr. Tom, uh, you know, you travel, you have video footage, and, and sometimes the best way to see that work zone, that, that pressure and release of, of cattle and how, what you're talking about is through video. Yes, Dan, it's a blessing to have uh, young caregivers teach me. So <laughs> I've learned most of these things by watching people do these things that are better than I am. So it's really, a, a, I've got some video that I think will give us an illustration of the working zone. Well, Position, distance, well, angle, and speed. Well, let's go ahead and pull that video up and, and take a look. So what you see here is, is, a, is a young caregiver. Uh, Jared, is, his job is to, to, to remove the yellow steer from the pen, and you notice the gate is up the hill. You notice that he didn't circle around behind the steer. He's approaching the steer between the gate 
I mean, he's taken the steer essentially away from the gate. The point is, when that steer moved, that horse backed up. This, when he stopped, the steer stepped toward him. As you see that, that steer is telling Jared that if you'll stay out to the side of me so that I can see you easily with my right eye, I'll go any place for you. What's, what's really nice about this, Jared and this steer is essentially willing and able to volunteer to travel toward the gate and really not changing the rest of the cattle. Now the steer is at the gate and says, what can I do for you? This head posture, when a steer stops and looks back at you, He's really, really asking for guidance. And every time that steer, after they press forward, put pressure and the steer goes the direction he wants, he's backing up, allowing that steer to... Absolutely. The steer's asking for stimulus here. Jared doesn't want to point the horse at him, so he side passes. That's enough gentle pressure. The minute the steer moves, he moved away. Now, the steer's saying, please come up where I can see you, but he doesn't want to bother the other cattle. So that's the only time Jared really stares at him. And that drives the steer around and he stops symmetrically with his front feet fairly well spaced and the steer is willing to set. He set the parking brake on this animal and as Jared goes to the gate, the steer straightens his head and said that's much more comfortable. Now he's able to fulfill the requirement that cattle want to see what is guiding them and want to see where you want them to go. And notice when Jared's leg gets right at the front of that eye that steer knows that he has to leave, and he volunteers and belongs out of that pit. <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? It's really, it's really a special uh, chance to, to communicate effectively with animals. Well, you know, the, when, when you start to think about the point of balance, the work zone, the flight zone, and releasing pressure, so many of these core concepts that you've shared with us today are just incredible. It's really important to know that whatever animals do while you're there is your responsibility. They're reacting. They're going to do actions. what you ask them to do. <laughs> Wherever they go, they be go, they go there because of what you did. And sometimes we may ask yeah, them to do their own thing. Sometimes we have to stop and say, "That's me." <laughs> I'm sure glad you're here today, and we're sure Thank glad you. you're joining us too. We'll be back more with Dr. Tom Knopfsinger. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. A K-State agricultural economist had the opportunity to speak at the 2013 Women Managing the Farm Conference hosted in Manhattan, Kansas. For Ag AM in Kansas, I am Devin Stewart. Vincent Amanor Boadu challenged women involved in farm and ranch management to think strategically about the leadership qualities and operational skills that are necessary to ensure their agricultural livelihoods, as well as the positives of farm life and traditions. We have to be creative. We have to build leadership. But when you look at agriculture, even though women are the majority in our communities, we don't have the numbers in leadership position. That can now begin to step in and take this industry where they, you know, I believe that they can take us. With Ag AM in Kansas, I'm Devin Stewart. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. In the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad 
efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Hey there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, and we're discussing low-stress cattle handling. Dr. Knopfsinger is a member of PAC, or the Professional Animal Consultant Group, here out of Kansas, Nebraska, and Colorado, and, and Dr. Tom, you know, during the break we talked a little bit about the basics or the basis for stockmanship. I think, Dan, it's, it's a big responsibility to, to know that, that animals are going to go where you send them. And the foundation of effective stockmanship or low stress handling is com effective communication with the animals. And to be effective, we need to understand how to send message to the cattle efficiently. The first thing that we've noticed is that cattle or sheep or pigs or, or any of these prey species are not verbally based. Right. They, don't have a la they, don't have a, they don't have a word for go. So you have to take away all voice. So we try to remove all human voice, all whistling, all of that commotion out of the equation. So, so in other words, yelling and screaming and whistling. That, those, it took me a while to figure out that, that cattle are like people and they can only think of one thing at once. <laughs> and so if cows are walking and somebody screams at them, they have to stop thinking about walking and think about what you said. And then st everything stops. Yeah, sometimes speaking louder does not make it more understandable. I, I agree. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. And so, uh, no, so, so if, we, if we do not have the opportunity to use voice or whistling or loud uh, vocal commands, what tools do we have left to communicate? And they're simply our posture, our, our position, how far away we are from the animal, the working zone, and then all of the things that we, we use as far as angles. A 45 degree angle tells an animal a very strong message. Moving your shoulder speeds cattle up. Moving it this way can slow them down. If I stand like this, it'll almost push the fence down. In, in contrast, I can turn around and do this, and the cattle are willing to come by. Come by. So it's really important that we know that they notice smaller movements than we notice. Yep. Well, I've heard even with in humans, in 93 percent of all communication is nonverbal. Ah, oh, that's a good point, Dan. And I, <laughs> I always wondered why. Uh, uh, a lot of times, I couldn't see uh, the caregiver's eyes when they're wearing that big old black hat, and they don't want to visit with me. I can't find them. They're like this. But if they want to interact with me, at least they will look up. <laughs> yep. Okay. I mean, it's it's very subtle sometimes. Yep. And how we how we interact not only with people, but I think it's really amazing that, you know, leading from the front, different things of that nature. It's um, it's really at the at the end of the day, it kind of helps you start to understand maybe the difference uh, between uh, um, a, a cowboy and a shepherd. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you being here and sharing it's your been thoughts. It's a pleasure. With, yep. Folks, this is, a one, uh, this is the first part of a two-part series, and so this is kind of to be continued. If you want to know more about what I do here at the College of Veterinary Medicine, you can find me on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, we always recommend that you work with your local practitioner. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. I've been joined by Dr. Tom Knopfsanger. Thanks for watching Doc Talk, Talk, and I'll see you down the road. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. Well, the Kansas State University cow-calf herd has to be run as a business. Uh, we have to uh, have positive cash flow in order to exist. So treatment costs are important to us. Multiman 90 was, was applied to the cows um, 107 days before the first predicted calving date. 
and then again approximately 30 days before the anticipated start of the breeding season. In our study, treatment costs with Multimin 90 cost an additional $6.40 per cow. That included both injections. Now, a question a producer might ask is how much extra performance on a cow or a calf do I need to capture to pay for that $6.40? Well, historically, the value of gain in a calf has been worth um, right around $0.65 cents a pound. If a calf is born approximately five days earlier, it will gain, it will be 10 pounds heavier at weaning time. Now in our study, with the shift in calving distribution that we saw farther forward in the season, in other words, we had a greater proportion of calves born early in the season and treated females as opposed to untreated females, we would have more than captured uh, the value of the product that we applied. In our study, 77% of the treated females gave birth in the first 20 days of the calving season. Untreated females, uh, only 64% of the animals gave birth in the first 20 days of the season. In other words, we had 13% more calves born early in the season. The opportunity for them to, uh, uh, to be heavier at weaning uh, was, was greater among the treated females simply because those calves were older. Their mothers conceived earlier, they gave birth earlier. Um, for every day that a calf spends suckling its mother, it's gonna gain about 2.2 pounds. In causing those calves to be born earlier in the year, they would have had greater opportunity to accrue body weight prior to weaning time.